Okay, so we've opened up our worksheet one more time, and as you can see, I've just tidied up a few things. I've done some labeling uh, in my solution for the reactions, uh, identifying uh, the various reaction intermedi intermediary solutions in the right-hand margin. I've identified that our next step is to calculate internal forces at C, and over here on the left, I have set myself up to do a partial free body diagram. So the method of sections basically allows me to drop the line down. You see I'll trace here the line dropping down from C, which I've added in. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut the section at that plane and throw away all on one side or the other. In this case, we're throwing away everything on the right-hand side of that plane. Now to do that, what we need to do is we need to replace uh, everything in that section with internal forces that are tra uh, transferred by the structure. So I'm going to draw my internal forces here uh, in the section so we have possibility of a normal force. So I'll draw that in. We have the possibility of a shear force and the possibility of a moment. And I'll draw that in and I will label them normal, shear, and moment, and they're all at point C. So I will put them in there. Now to complete my free body diagram, of course what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to add all of the other external forces that exist on that section. So in this case we have our point load uh, here of 15 kilonewtons. And we also have our reaction at A. We have a single value, which is our reaction at A of 11.58 kilonewtons. And this becomes our partial free body diagram, which allows us to solve for the internal forces that occur on the section uh, that we cut. So the resolution of the internal forces looks a lot like it did for the uh, resolution of the reactions. We're basically going to do uh, or to, going to apply our equations of static equilibrium. We'll do them successively and in each instance we'll be able to solve for one of our uh, internal forces. So I'm just very quickly going to apply some of the forces in the x direction equal to zero and we see that the normal force at C is equal to zero. We can then apply the sum of the forces in the y direction, set it equal to zero, and we have, uh, I'll do again positive up, 11.58 kilonewtons, which is our reaction at A, less 15 kilonewtons, which is the point load, and finally, we subtract our shear force at C. And this allows us to solve for V at C and get a value of negative 3.42 kilonewtons. And the negative sign simply indicates that the direction in which we drew it is opposite to what it really is. We can complete this by doing some of the moments about point C equal to zero. It doesn't really matter what you choose. And we'll again do clockwise as positive. We'll work our way from left to right. So the 11.58 kilonewtons in this case, because we're doing it about point C, has a line of action. It tries to turn it clockwise, so we keep it as positive, and it is 1.5 meters to the left of point C. The 15 kilonewtons tries to turn it counterclockwise, so we turn it to negative 15 kilonewtons, and it has a distance or exists at a distance of 0 0.5 meters to the left of C. And finally, we have to apply the moment at C, right? And it is applied directly. In this case, it's drawn as counterclockwise, so we can draw it in as negative. And this allows us, with a little bit of algebra, to solve for the moment at C and get a value of 9.87 kilonewton meters.